According to research by Professor Roger Ulrich, the view through a window can facilitate recovery from surgery. Patients with nature window views were released from the hospital faster and had fewer complications. Trees reduce stress, relieve pain, and help you relax. Until you look at the branch and see this. What if I tell you this small bird that looks like a sparrow is in no way inferior to eagles and owls? The loggerhead shrike is also known as a butcher bird, although it looks like a companion to some Disney princess, but don't let the looks deceive you. The menu of this bird includes insects, arachnids, amphibians, reptiles, small rodents, and even young birds of other species. Seeing potential prey, the loggerhead shrike swoops down on it like an eagle. Hold on, an eagle? Seriously? This baby? Yes, sometimes strikes grow up to 10 inches, but that's still very small. Just look at them. Usually predators have powerful wings to carry heavy loads and sharp, strong claws to catch their prey. Add the beak and you get a real killing machine. <laughs> Meanwhile, loggerhead shrike got the feet of a sparrow. They're only good for sitting gracefully on a branch. Their wings also don't look like powerful lifting mechanisms. Of course, evolution gave loggerhead shrikes hooked beaks, but compared to the beaks of eagles, they look like mockery. And when I say loggerhead shrike's feet are only good for sitting on branches, I mean it. As soon as the birds land on a branch or some kind of wire, their feet are automatically locked to prevent falling. In addition, their feet usually don't feel anything. Birds need that to be able to sit on cold surfaces. Try grabbing a metal handrail outside in wintertime and you'll understand why loggerhead shrikes prefer to get rid of the feeling. Hey, I told you to grab it with your hand. Do not try to lick it. No! It would seem that with skills like that, the loggerhead shrikes should have switched to a diet of berries, seeds, and small bugs. But they did not give up and came up with quite a gory way of hunting. Since nature has not given the shrikes strong enough feet, wings, and beak, they use tools, like thorns. I'm not even sure I can explain how it works without violating the YouTube policies. Well, can you imagine a kebab? It works the same way. It's much more convenient to eat prey from a thorn. Also, you can leave it there like in a pantry, and then go back and finish your meal. And just when you think things can't get any more frightening, the shrikes say, ha, because these cute birds use the kebab technique not only to make prey easier to eat, sometimes even not very big prey ends up on the thorns if the loggerhead shrike needs to remove toxins from it. It's simple. Grasshoppers live somewhere in a field that humans have treated against pests, which means they carry some of the toxin on themselves as well. Shrikes are smart enough to realize this, but if you leave the grasshopper in the sun and let it dry for a while, then the toxin will no longer be dangerous. So how long should I dry them? I knew I shouldn't have skipped grasshopper studies. And you know what? The sun can really destroy toxins. Researchers from two American labs are working on using sunlight to break down harmful compounds such as dioxins. These substances appear for a number of reasons, but mainly due to the uncontrolled burning of waste. They end up everywhere, from soil to food, plants, and air. Only recently have scientists figured out how to use the sun to solve this issue. And it looks like it really works. To be honest, I felt I was a little dumber than a bird when I found this out. On the other hand, I don't eat grasshoppers, so... But I don't think shrikes are reenacting forest horror scenes just for the sake of food. Nature probably thought that was too cruel, and so shrikes began to use thorns to court the ladies. The approach is the same. Males make several kebabs and attract females. Whoever did it better is a winner. I agree, a dead mouse on a spit doesn't look like the perfect gift on a romantic date. By human standards, animals are generally not very good at surprises and bring all sorts of nonsense. Better not invite a male scorpion to your birthday, it'll give you a drop of his saliva. Penguins will bring you stones, crickets, pieces of their own wings. What about half-eaten insects? Well, the best gift ever. Nursery web spiders went to even greater extremes. According to the spider tradition, they should give the female a delicious gift but sometimes the males use deception. Instead of prey, they bring worthless stuff like pieces of flowers, cotton, inedible leftovers from the insects they ate. Moreover, worthless gifts are usually wrapped in more layers of silk than ordinary ones, and this leads to an obvious idea. The spiders clearly know what they're doing. They deliberately use decoys and try to disguise them as best they can. Well, in the end, the female will still find out the truth. But during the short period when she's busy unpacking the gifts, she thinks this male is just perfect for her. 
Please let it be a PlayStation. Please let it be a PlayStation. A stone again? Can't I find a real man anymore these days? What? The Shrike's gifts don't seem so weird anymore, do they? Moreover, the birds also put in some effort to prepare them. Before turning its prey into a gift kebab, the Shrike shakes it vigorously. Remember the woodpeckers who put their brains under enormous stress? Shrikes are not like that yet, but in order to immobilize or even kill large enough prey, they have to arrange a roller coaster for them. Well, almost. The birds grab the mice by the neck with their sharp beak, pinch the spinal cord to induce paralysis, and then shake them. They do it with a force that reaches about 6G. Coincidentally, this is usually the highest allowed G-force on the rides. Do you remember this moment when you're suddenly pushed into a chair? The stronger this feeling, the stronger the overloads. But they should last no longer than a couple of seconds. These are safety requirements so that people stay alive after the roller coaster ride. Good thing roller coasters aren't run by shrikes. <laughs> However, despite all the safety measures, people still black out on the rides. There's still no statistics on that, but what's happening can be explained from a medical point of view. Due to high G-force, when a person is pushed into a chair, the blood does not have enough time to get to the brain, which means it doesn't receive enough oxygen. And the best thing the brain can do in this situation is to go into sleep mode for a few seconds. Sometimes it just affects vision, Sometimes a person passes out. But have you ever wondered why this is happening at all? Well, as for the internal structure of the body, everything is clear. Blood, oxygen, all that stuff. But what about evolution? Passing out looks like a death sentence in the wild. Imagine if, I don't know, an antelope chased by a lion acted this way. He would hardly think, oh no, she's unconscious. I'll look for something else for lunch. So what's the reason? The most common type of syncope is vasovagal. It occurs as a reaction of the body to emotional or physical stress. For example, when you see something unpleasant. Passed out when you saw blood? This is also a vasovagal syncope. And humans seem to have developed it as a defense against other humans. In the Paleolithic era, ancient people were always fighting each other, and the most common cause of death was a wound caused by a sharp object. Scientists believe that women and children simply could not escape from enemy warriors, so they developed such a weird reaction. They began to pass out from fear or at the sight of blood, unwittingly pretending to be dead. Seems like it worked, turning into a survival mechanism. Otherwise, modern people would simply not know how to pass out. She's dead for the fifth time this week. It's kind of weird. It's okay, Steve. Let's go invent the wheel. Okay. Unlike humans, animals can't experience vasovagal syncope, and this is understandable. As I already said, predators will not abandon a prey that is suddenly passed out, which is why there are other defense mechanisms in the wild. When the prey can't escape for some reason, it becomes sort of stunned, but it has nothing to do with fainting. It's just staying immobile for the sake of survival. Many predators who track down their prey react to movement, and since lunch does not move, this is not lunch anymore, so they keep looking. At the same time, staying immobile can be a reaction to extreme fear, and some predators have learned to use it. Snowy owls, which are supposed to be less successful hunters on moonlit nights, scare rodents with bright light reflected from their plumage. This fear has been tested in the lab, and yes, the brighter the light, the stronger the fear, and the longer the animals remain still, as if they're stunned, but often they freeze too late. Owls have time to see and hear them, all that's left is to attack. Loggerhead shrikes hunt in daylight and look harmless, but they pounce on their prey like falcons and know how to stun it like owls, and even learn to use tools instead of sharp claws. We're talking about a small, weak bird with a beautiful singing voice. How did it even manage to evolve this way? Well, I have an answer. You're not you when you're hungry. See you later.